Good afternoon, everyone. Are you ready to roar? I can't hear you. Are you ready to roar? All right. So if everybody can stand up before we get started. For those of you that haven't attended previous events, we now have a motto, a slogan, whatever you want to call it. And it's Lionheart, UP Pride. <laughs> Lionheart, UP Pride. Okay? So we're all going to do it together as a kickoff to our 11,000 Reasons to Roar. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Lionheart, UP Pride. <laughs> and it changes all the time. <laughs> All right, you can sit down. Thank you. All right, and um, somebody brought it to my attention that uh, some people actually wore some animal print uh, in honor of this event. And so if you have on animal print today, can you please stand up? Lisa Hill. Yay, Lisa! So anyways, thank you for uh, investing in our Reasons to Roar event. Um, so as you all know, you're here today, and we actually have an exciting agenda for you. Uh, we have a variety of people coming to speak, um, really about what, what all of this means to us. Uh, and of course, we couldn't get started without our infamous president, Shah Ardalan. Shah Ardalan, as you know, is our first president here at Lone Star College University Park. And since he's taken over, we have grown 252%. So let's give a big hand for Shah Ardalan. Thank you. It is another beautiful day at University Park. And it's a, it's a great that is today, I think, is the first day of fall, right? Yes. So this is a great fall day at, uh, at uh, University Park, but of course, we are not falling. We're going to go keep going up. Again, my congratulations to all of you. 11,000 students. I mean, this is exciting. It was just last year that we celebrated the 9,000 students. So this is great. It's great on many fronts. As I've mentioned, people come for quality. It's not any more than, OK, we're hidden behind some trees and people know. Some people know where we are, some don't. But uh, the, uh, the uh, reputation that uh, our faculty have, uh, have uh, built it's going much further beyond these this trees, and, and uh, people are talking about it now with uh, our presence at Willowbrook Mall. Again, people are stopping by. They're asking. They say, oh, this is the Lone Star. So again, I just wanted to say thank you and congratulate each and every one of you for uh, a, a great work. And uh, remember that we, we talk about it. Uh, of course, it uh, all starts with, uh, with the quality of the faculty that we have. but. Uh, Equally important is the quality of the staff that we have, is the quality of students' uh, uh, services, the quality of, again, you talk about the facilities, you talk about anything, you talk about our police, you talk about our IT. Everything that's going on, it all gets together and, and builds this campus. Yesterday I was talking to, to uh, a, uh, a uh, newspaper guy and uh, they just keep asking, it just keeps coming up that why is it? Why is it that uh, you guys are growing so fast and it's just not slowing down? And uh, since some of them that don't know is because of my looks, of course, you know, that what is why all, all these 11,000 students came here. But uh, the, uh, the reality is that, again, uh, you have built an environment that people know that when they come here, you want to teach them, you want to uh, take care of them, you want to help them from financial aid services all the way to anything, from tutoring, from anything that they need, they know that you're here for them. And it shows. Again, many people talk about it. I think you, you practice it every day, day in, day out. So for that, thank you very much. And. Uh, <clears throat> Me and Kathy and some others, we're going to meet about the, uh, the goal for next year. Of course, there is a lot of negotiations going on, and it's going to be civil, you know. It's normally, that's, that's what we do. And uh, so far, I just showed her to, to, to get her heartbeat going. It's, uh, I showed her, I said, 20%. She said, I never agreed to that. 
I said, okay. <laughs> How about 20% for this next semester? She said, done. So we do expect to grow by 20% this, this uh, spring, which is going to be great. But with that comes also, it's a, uh, I had breakfast with Chancellor yesterday, and we are negotiating for how many full-time faculties we get. So uh, all I can tell you is uh, you can rest assured that we will have 20% uh, growth in the uh, full-time faculty numbers. So I think with that comes uh, a lot of uh, great uh, uh, help because our faculty have been serving more than any faculty across the system in so many communities, in so many, again, each time I just feel ashamed to ask them for more stuff anymore. Can you, Paula, can you separate just one more, just one more community here a little? And then uh, you go that you find out that's uh, this a full-time job by itself and it uh, involves summer work and everything else. But uh, we all signed up for this. And I'm so proud to be a part of this, this great team that uh, uh, just keeps breaking any and all records. But I think you're doing it for the right reasons. You're doing it for your belief in uh, what this country needs. You do it for the kids. You do it for your uh, own aspirations. And uh, I appreciate and I'm honored to be a part of it. So instead of talking a whole bunch of stuff, let's just uh, get it from, uh, we're going to hear from two main ingredients to, to this campus. First, we had to have uh, faculty, and uh, they're uh, represented by uh, your uh, fearless uh, faculty senate president, Paula, is going to come and say a few words, and then we had to have students, so you can make a college, right? You cannot have one without the other. So, and then Mark is going to come and talk to you. Paolo, please come and, and join us here. Actually, the best thing about this job is that I get to speak for faculty, for all of you, and they trust me to do it, which is really nice. Um, we can't reach those high goals unless we have somebody who sets the mark really high. And so thank you to our president for always pushing us to be our best. Um, one of the things, I get most of my comments are really for students today. So th that's why we're here. Do, students, can you just raise your hand so I know where you are? We need more of you, but uh, thank you so much for coming. So I'll just talk to you guys. Um, <laughs> first of all, thank you for choosing us because there are other options that you have and faculty, you, students are the reasons we love come, coming to work every day. Um, and I hope, I want to encourage our faculty to keep telling those good stories. I know that all of you have them and so of course I have a story for you. So. Um, <laughs> Already this semester, I have each class I could tell a story about someone. So uh, Anthony's not here today and he doesn't know I'm doing this, but um, I already have a star. All of my students are awesome. But I have a star, a leader in one of my classes who is um, really enriching my class. You all learn a lot from each other. So the, um, we've, we're trying this new linked class, Professor Keyworth and I, and already it's happening. There's a community of learners in this class. And so towards the end of class, uh, early last week, um, the student raises his hand and he says, Professor Caleb, I just want to say something to the class. And I get a little worried sometimes like that. And I was like, okay. So uh, he stood up and he said, I want you all to know that if we work together, we can all get through this class. We can be successful in this class, in the history class, if we work together to do this. And I was like, wow, wow, can you come to all my classes and say that? Um, and he also said, he said, I want everybody to know that I've created a Facebook page just for this class. And the only thing I ask is that you contribute. You can, you can enjoy the benefits of it, but you need to contribute to that class also. So it's a truly unique, fabulous group of learners that are together in that class. You all, um, sometimes faculty or students think that they're just going to learn things from faculty. It's not. That community of learners, you all learn from each other. 
So um, thank you students for enriching our lives. You teach us new things every day too. Um, and uh, continue to do that, build those relationships. Let us help you get where you wanna go too because now I've identified a good leader for our college. So thank you all. It's for the students, that's why all of us are here. Um, and I just wanted to say, if you're, um, if you're not a student and you're not faculty, just stand up. All, all of these people, you know, sometimes we think it's just faculty, but it's, it's administrators, it's student services, it's, uh, you know, office assistants, it's every one of you. We couldn't have gotten to 11,000 without this because we had computer issues and payment problems and all kinds of things. And without all of you, you people were making phone calls for, you know, the whole week before class started. And thank you so much. You are amazing. So um, I guess my message with the 11,000 is, yeah, I guess, you know, we'll, we can accommodate whatever students come our way. You are why we're here. Um, thank you for making it such a pleasure to come to work every day. Thanks. Okay, uh, please join me in welcoming our student government president, Mark Thibodeau. You can have him. Mark graduated Jersey Village in 2013, and he began here in 2014 and decided to major in psychology with the hopes of opening his own practice, which is pretty exciting. And then he shadowed the student government president last year and decided this is what he wanted to do. So on behalf of our 11,000 students, I introduce Mark Thibodeau. <laughs> so, when I was told that we reached 11,000 students, there was only one word that came to my mind. That's amazing. That is simply amazing. Because uh, I'm on the allocations committee and it seems like I do way too much. Uh, <laughs> but we, we kind of projected that we were going to reach 11,000 and I'm just thinking to myself, wow, that's a lot of students. How many do we have now? 9,000 or something? And it's like, yeah, I'm bad at math. Um, but uh, I was just, I was, I was amazed that we had so many students here because when I first got here, my first semester, I saw so many faces and it was recurring faces. I was like, oh, I know that guy, he's in my philosophy class. And it was just a small bunch of students. And now we're this huge cohort of different students and we're going in different places but we're all, we, we always stop and we share our story. We share, oh, I'm gonna to transfer to UT, I'm gonna to transfer to Texas A&M. And uh, I know that, that that bunch of people probably are like, hmm, UT, okay, whatever. Uh, Texas uh, is like, yeah, hook them, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> but I've met so many amazing students and I continue to meet so many amazing students because we, we just keep growing. Uh, I just spoke to another student who doesn't go here. They go to the SciFair campus, and he, he was speaking to me about the TSI tutoring in the library. And I'm like, yeah, we have that here. He's like, well, I was thinking about transferring there next spring. And I was like, okay. And he was like, why do you like your campus? And I was like, that's weird. I've filled out so many applications, and that question was always on the applications, thanks to Sarah Ray of Student Life. Uh, <laughs> that question is like, when did you fall in love with UP and why? And at first I couldn't answer it. It was like, okay, I just showed up here and I was like, okay, I don't want to leave this place. Uh, and no, the truth is, as soon as I walked in this campus, it felt like I belonged here. I came here for my placement test uh, and I, I got my scores and I actually went to the Victory campus to pick my classes. And the weird thing was, all my classes was UP. And I was like, okay, maybe I belong there. Maybe this is this isn't a uh, like a, just like a random set of events. Maybe this is this is fate. Maybe I belong at UP. And 
it was just, it was as simple as that. And I got here, fell in love with every floor of this campus. <laughs> and, and now anytime a student comes and is like, oh, why should I come to UV? It's like, oh, for one thing, this is Texas and it rains a lot and you will not get rained on. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the parking garages are just a plus. It's the amazing staff, faculty, and the fact that the students, although we do look like we're busy and zooming past every part of the school, we always stop to get somebody's name and to see where they're going or help them find a class because it's kind of confusing building 12, building 13, building 9, building 100 sooner or later. <laughs> and <laughs> it's always helpful when that student who's been here for two semesters can stop and help that student who's been here for about a week and tell them, oh, you're in building 13 on the seventh floor, I'll walk you there or I'll catch the elevator with you. And as simple as that, and that's my view as a student government president and as a student. Um, I feel like they kind of combine most of the time because even when I'm sitting in class paying attention to my professor, I'm the other half of my brain is sitting there trying to figure out, okay, what do I need to email all my officers? And it always works out that way because I always have help when I'm doing something like that. I can pretty much sit there and talk to any of my professors and speak to them about anything that goes on on campus and off campus because they're always there to help and that's pretty much what UP kind of stands for. We're here to help no matter what it is. Okay. All right, next on our agenda, well let's give Mark another round of applause. Mark is a fantastic representative of our student population and we appreciate all that you do. Um, next, I'd like to bring up Dr. Zach Copeland, uh, Vice President of Student Success. Good afternoon. It's good to be back. <laughs> Some of you know I've been in jury duty for a long time, so. <laughs> Um, and we kept growing even while I was there, so I hate to say that in front of the president, but we have a good team here that works. So um, let me start by just asking all the student success people in the room to stand up. I know um, Paula recognized you, but I want to recognize you again. So student success folks, please stand up. Very good. Let's thank them for their hard work. That would be you, Jenny Doe. That's what they're telling you. So you know the long lines and the long hours that, that you all worked and saw during um, registration. These folks made phone calls and came in on Sundays and worked past their hours on all sorts of days. And when the payment system went down, they came up with ideas. And they contacted all the other faculty and staff in the room to come up with strategies. And so they're just um, part of the pride of UP, and I want them to know how much um, I appreciate them and what a joy it is to work with each of them. And the reason I think that they're such a special team is because they have the spirit of UP in their hearts. And that goes to the question that I'm always asked that, that Mark alluded to. When my colleagues around the system ask me what we're doing to grow at UP and why our numbers are so high, I always say to them very sincerely, the numbers at UP are high because no one at UP is a number. And our students tell us constantly that when they come here, they feel cared for and they feel known and they feel like this is a place where someone really has their interest at heart. And um, I'm proud of the fact that we maintain that culture. Um, at 11,000 the same way we did at 5,300 or whatever it was uh, just, just recently. And um, that goes to a great student success team that I'm very proud of. But it also goes to a collegiality that we have on this campus that means that we work closely together and these silos that we see in higher education really do crumble down. Um, so last week when I, while I was on jury duty, I teach class on Wednesday nights and I wasn't gonna make it here by six o'clock and so I fretted about this all week as more and more testimony 
you know, went on and on. And so I called Shannon Housinger, and um, she and her team responded immediately to take care of my class until I could get there. And the week before that, Ramon and the folks in advising did that. And so I think that's something that we take for granted around here, and we assume it happens everywhere, and it doesn't. So I'm grateful for that, and I'm grateful for all of you in the way that we work together. Just a couple of things that I want you to know about, because the hard work is ahead. We've reached this amazing goal, but our goal is not to recruit students. Our goal is for students to come here and to be successful and complete their education so that they can achieve the dreams that they've set for themselves. And so 11,134 students in seats this week is just part of the equation. They need to be successful. They need to graduate. And I know that each of us do that in our different ways as partners in this educational process. But there's, um, there's a lot of work that comes with, that, with this responsibility we've been given. And, and I know we're up to the task, but I um, don't want us to forget that as we celebrate this important achievement. So we've got lots of plans in student services, and I know in, in instruction and in, um, all, of, all the areas around the college to respond to this demand. And so we'll have new facilities coming online, allegedly, right, Richard? We have more money, we have um, more faculty, and we have faculty doing new things, and we, we have deans and doms and all these things that we used to have one of, and now we have uh, more than one of. And so that's exciting. And so I just hope that we will continue to work the way we have in the past with this focus on student success and completion at the front. Um, you've heard about our Willowbrook Center that we're very excited about. In this um, fall semester, we hope to have a new space for the financial aid space. We hope to have a new career and transfer center open, serving students. I'm saying these things publicly in hopes that they come to fruition. <laughs> We've been planning for a long time. <laughs> um, we're going to have a new welcome center and eventually a new space for our admission staff. And with that movement comes all sorts of other opportunities. I think you've seen new energy in, in the Student Life Welcome Back events. You've seen um, all sorts of other um, effective um, strategies that we've been uh, employing for our students. So we look forward to continuing that. And regardless of the number, know that you'll never be a number at UP. And we look forward to working with you and serving you in any way we can. Thank you all. Before we wrap up, we have a special opportunity today um, to do something a little unique, and Shaw is going to join me up here. Um, as you guys know, and, and Zach alluded to it, we are continually working on our culture and uh, really becoming who we are as a campus and making sure that we show the pride. And before we do this, I, I want to publicly thank college relations and professional development and all of the people on my team that I know work hard every day uh, to make sure we have these events and make sure our faculty are developed as much as possible and in all of those areas, innovation and everything like that. So, and our front desk crew who answer the phone, a lot of phone calls every day. So uh, with that, without further ado, Shaw. Thank you, thank you. As you heard from just a sampling of, uh, of uh, speakers is, again, students are excited to be here, faculty are excited to, to, to teach, and, and uh, others are excited to support in any way that they can. But now that uh, Martha is here, I think it's only appropriate to ask all faculty to please uh, stand and be recognized. Thank you. I know, just the, the way that uh, our students are in class, then of course somebody needs to be there to teach them. So that's, that's again, that's uh, priority one. Uh, talked about culture, and, and there's going to be more, uh, more uh, you're going to hear more. Uh, I know that many of you participate in those uh, uh, monthly WebEx that uh, you see, and you get so happy when you hear from Armark. 
That's the uh, that's the uh, passion of the uh, of the presentation normally is given by him, and uh, but we talk about uh, Leo. Leo again, a lot of research went into it, and now uh, it it keeps uh, uh, growing. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of uh, meeting the new Leo, and 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 took some pictures. So. Uh, as we grow, as we mature as an organization and as a, uh, as a uh, uh, college, I would like to introduce to you the new Leo. Where is he? about new Leo? Well, get your picture with new Leo, and then we will wrap up for today. Um, any last? All right, we are done for today, and you guys have a fantastic new semester, and we look forward to growing our 20%. Thanks so much. <laughs>